what we forgot to do? What do what? Fit checks. Oh, we sure did. Oh my That's gosh. Nice. We are you can't like that. No, I was confused. Like, what we did? Okay, okay. So with your rosebud thorn and your strap. My career journey has changed since the beginning of when I started doing it too. Like, I really wanted to do more videos on and get into like magazine writing. But um, I started, that's where I want to be now. I'm more curating side, of, which is part yeah. of my major and my second minor, which is control studies. Same. So, same minor. We'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of just like, she do what my heart is. Aligns with and um, just because I have so many passions, but that's what I appreciate about the Room Tiger is like you get really so much opportunity to just try different types of reporting um, when it comes to like actual topics and also when it comes to like mediums of different stories. Mm -hmm. so, it's a story. Oh, oh, my gosh. Gosh. Wait, what? To match the corduroy. Hello. Oh, wait a minute. You just yeah. pull something out. This is where it is.
close with all of your Spellman sisters, whether they're adopted or whether they were your official yeah, Spellman sister? Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Um, this is a great topic because I just texted my Spellman sister. So one of them is from the ceremony. Um, one of them is from the Protege program. So oh, I did that at this? Awesome. I didn't know. Yeah, so I was in the Protege program last year. And then I have another one that I just like recently adopted <coughs> over the break. So I say I have three Spellman sisters right now. Okay. Um, I was literally just coming from lunch with the with the third one, the most recent one. So that's why I was. That's so amazing. I, mean, okay. I feel like you I guess I can like We can forgive you for that. Yeah. So I apologize. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay. So, so what I was gonna say is, um, I just texted my uh, one from the ceremony and the uh, one from the program. Like, how can I support you, like, in this new year? Period. Because I felt like toward the end of last semester. Um, you know, I, I think everybody was just trying to get their stuff together before break, um, get what they had to do done. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of felt bad for not being able to really sit down and see how their lives were going. Because you can do a little check in, oh, I'm good, I'm good, but like, I, you know. You want to actually think, be involved? Yeah, every now and then you, you want to be involved. Even if I'm not their best friend, because I'm not their best friend. Mm -hmm. um, they have their friend groups, but like, you know, I'm still their Morehouse brother, one of their Morehouse brothers, so mm -hmm. I think. It's my responsibility to at least understand how I can support them. You know, yeah, so. I'm so glad you think that way because so many people fall off with their Morehouse brother or Spelman sister from the beginning and just because they didn't instantly click. Mm. But like you said, I definitely think it's one of those things where like, think about your real siblings. Like, you have to think, y'all are kind of stuck with each other, but they're not always your best friend, but you're going to look out for each other in the day. It's a it's a relationship like it's a yeah. human, it's a human relationship. It doesn't matter if that's the person that you click with the most. Like it doesn't matter. You still yeah, it's a responsibility. Yeah, for like, sure. We're paired with that person, so you want to make sure um, that y'all can you know, understand what works between you two. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think it makes any sense to compare your yeah. relationship with your son and sister or your mom and brother with anybody else because we're all. Yeah. So yeah, I try I try to take take that responsibility seriously. No. Yeah, I think we're cool though. Like it's, it's, like, it's not like I don't talk to them at all. But uh, I just and it's I just talked to my spouse since the last night on the phone like for a, for a long ass time because we had yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I'm be yeah. Hi, you're here. Okay. Or like, yeah, like we was on the phone for a, a minute, mm -hmm. just like catching up on everything. Great last semester, friends, everything. So, so, yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah. I love that. Well, for context, I would, you know, the phrase y'all, just for the, like, the, the listeners who don't know who is house, the phraseology of that kind of comes from NS New Story Orientation over at Morehouse. I forget, I forgot y'all be gatekeeping with people and all over there. Yeah, I didn't even mean to do that, but I guess. You know, no, no, that's good though. It's good though. Because I think that kind of goes into the theme of today. Thank you. So basically, this is like, this episode, I, I was just telling them about how like there was a spirit of like being able, I wanted to go into this year, being able to just have like a, a foundational episode, just checking in with one another, you know, as anchors and also as people who are on Moon Tiger too. Um, having new guests here. And yeah, just, everybody in MT. Right? Yeah, we're yeah, all in MT. So, you know. Just let's go on and say what we do in MT. Yeah, you yeah. might as well. You want to start with you, Ryan? Yeah, so I report mostly on news. Um, I also do a little bit of like entertainment. I kind of just like. She do everything. Yeah, yeah, she do she what my heart aligns with. And <laughs> um, just because I have so many passions, but that's what I appreciate about the Maroon Tiger is like you get really so much opportunity to just try different types of reporting um, when it comes to like actual topics and also when it comes to like mediums of different stories. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite story you've written? Um, that's a good question. I'd honestly have to say one of my first stories I wrote for the Maroon Tiger, it was um, right after the National Association of Black Journalists oh. and um, the, art, or the announcement just came out that they were limiting um, like DEI initiative or like limiting race conscious based decisions mm -hmm. when it came to like higher ed and higher institutions and so the article was basically talking about the role of the National Association of Black Journalists Conference mm -hmm. during that time and I just thought it was very culturally relevant and 
yeah, I just had some cool interviews and just good exposure. It was like an amazing opportunity. That's awesome. Uh, I'm mainly an anchor. I did a little editing last semester, but getting back more into my anchoring, I mainly do the podcast in terms of the section of TV. So what did you do? And was to anchor. Um, my career journey has changed since the beginning of when I started doing it too. Like I really wanted to do more journalism and get into like magazine writing. But um, I started. That's where I want to be now. On um, more curating side, of, which is part yeah. of my major and my second minor, which is controlling studies. Same. We so, have the same minor. I'm gonna talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> but um, so now I just kind of mainly anchor something I love to do. Can you talk a little bit about like the curatorial part combined with like the journalism part, like what that journey has looked like for you? It's actually interesting because um, the journalism side of like my brain, like the writing side, mm -hmm. it pairs with my control of states because it's a diff it's there are different art forms, but I somehow align them to where both my interests of like fashion and uh, contemporary art kind of align together with my writing and and for anyone who doesn't know, like all the wall texts, the um, tombstones, which is the title of the artwork, who's the artist, the size, yeah. the materials, that is a lot of writing. And it's a specific writing style, as well as the actual um, wall text where it tells you the um, title of the exhibition and then what the exhibit, why the exhibition was created. So I kind of align them that way and why I still keep being a part of Moon Tiger for those um, straight things. Wow. Yeah, I don't know that either. Thank you. Oh, I told you. We need to talk. Okay. Um, yeah, y'all know I be managing this podcast <laughs> and stuff. But it is, oh my god, I'm not wild on my phone. And in addition to that, to the podcast, I write a lot. So if you guys haven't seen my articles, definitely go on the Tiger's website. Look at my name or whatever. I've written a lot of good stuff lately. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I mean, so serious. <laughs> exactly what I would like to do here. Um, okay, so I wrote about this local election in Georgia, which was super cool. I think that's my favorite article to date. And then there's one that just got up today was about how a local influencer, her name is Ankh Tasho. I don't know if you guys ever watched her before, but she did like a little clothing drive at one of the churches here in Atlanta, and it was definitely like such a great moment. So that's my second favorite article I wrote, but. Other than that, y'all just gotta have to read, you know? So. What about the one that was in the agency? Yeah, that was my first article thing. Yeah, I wrote about <laughs> Abbott, um, yeah. one of the, uh, what's his name? Tyler? Yeah, Tyler James Williams mm -hmm. came to Morehouse. I wrote about that too. Chris. <laughs> yes. So, but yeah. And the reason why I chose to do journalism is exact, like, conversations like these, being able to host, like, intimate conversations. Hold space for vulnerability because at the end of the day, like when you listen to someone's like every story is somebody's experience and something that they've gone through in life, and so I value that significantly and I don't hold it lightly. So yes, what's it called where that you go around and you say like the roses and thorns or something? Yeah. You saw my thing, did you? I did not. I swear. If I sit right yeah. there, Mira. I, I swear, swear I did not see that. This is my God. This is my baby. She, we're here all the time. We're locked in. <laughs> <I love her. laughs> um. Yeah, so I guess we can do a rose, but a thorn. I think that'll help us. Does anybody want to? I'll go first. <laughs> oh, wait, you know what we forgot to do? We'll do what? Fit checks. Uh, we sure did. Oh my That's gosh. Sucks. Mira, you can't Dude. scare me like that. Dude. No, I was confused. Like, what we doing? Okay, okay, so with your rose, but a thorn, introduce your outfit, okay? Can you explain what that is? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so basically, I love a rose, but a thorn. Like, my friends from back home, like, we always yeah. used to get it when we go out to dinner. Anyway. So a rosebud thorn is basically talking about like a rose is a good thing, a part of, like a good thing that's happening. A bud is like not a uh, part that's happening, and a thorn is like a damn, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'll start us off because actually you know what I don't want to start. You guys go. I don't go. Okay. So my rose, my birthday is on Tuesday. Period. Mm -hmm. Kayla Marie Golden Month. Yeah, that's why I've been calling Kayla it to Marie, all my friends. Kayla Marie. Get it, I was like, that's not my name. Kayla, I like that. I'm like, yeah. that might be my new one. Yeah, but I've been telling like, everyone it's not Black History Month. It's Kayla Marie Golden Month. With features from my grandma. <laughs> but 
Um, that's obviously my rose. I'll be turning 21 on February 6th. So that's obviously the rose. The bud is, I had to take a math quiz, but it was take home. But I just don't like math. <laughs> so, I feel you. I'm just not a math person. Obviously, I'm in the arts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've had some bad experiences with math teacher, math teacher, so it's forever spoiling me. Um, I don't really have a thorn. I had thorns yesterday. So That's okay. I'm kind of chilling today. So <laughs> Work day. Really uh, I actually yeah, I mean, took a nap because <laughs> I feel like I just had to re wake up, and then I talked to my mom and grandma. Those and yeah, yeah. So they made me feel better just talking about what they ate for dinner and how it was. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. Yeah, so now I've been talking to family. Pigeon. Oh, pigeon. Okay. So I kind of put it on because I was coming here, even though Fridays is like my own class day. But I have this corduroy jacket. I don't remember where I got it from. Did I have a skins bodysuit? Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, Kendall and Kylie jeans. Oh, okay. And then, I just know the names. Not your cute jeans. And then, <laughs> and peep the purple in the shoe. Hello, boys. Wait, what? To match the corduroy. Hello. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. You just yeah. pull something out. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi guys. Who's next? I'll go next because I'm an Aquarius, too. <laughs> it's Ryanary, too? It's February Ride. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, oh, I like that one. February Ride. Dad's closet. It's Those like an old school Morehouse 
versus how it should. I like it though. Do you dance in the morning or do you go? Yes. Okay. What year are you graduated? He's old. <laughs> in the 80s. Is like, he from the class of the great 88? Mm -mm. Okay. Did you like girl? No, but one of my Spelman sisters' dads went to my house and he came for um, homecoming. And that's all he talked yes. about. They love homecoming. My dad was at homecoming too. <laughs> Jeans, I actually have no idea. Probably stole it from one of my friends. Mm -hmm. And then shoes are new balance. Newbies. Exactly. Newbies. Um, I can go next. Okay, so I'm going to be So if we're talking roses, so. Rose, I feel like I feel like I have everything organized right now. I feel like I have all of my ducks in a row. I'm okay. applying. I'm applying to so many. I mean, it's stressful at the same time, but getting them done. It's like checking something off of your list, mm -hmm. like summer programs, fellowships, etc. Then, if we're talking bud, something that's really consistent is that. I mean, I've always been like a workout person. It's like, well, I don't want to say always. Scratch that, not always. But since the beginning of like my journey at Spelman, like just the wellness center is right there, so I work out like four times a week. It's amazing. Oh, okay. yes. sure, workout plan. Girl, so I'm a morning workout person. Yeah, okay. So like I'll usually go because for some reason if I wait too late in the day, it's, just, it's not. It's not gonna happen. happen. It's not. I've fallen happen. into that trap. It ain't gonna happen. So I gotta do it in the morning, and then I split it up by like arms, legs, abs. Boots, etc. So recently, my legs have been kind of killing me because don't do too much in one day. That's all I'm gonna say. But I'm glad that my regimen has been pretty consistent. And then if we're talking thorns, I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Like I'm not sure if I like my schedule only because mm -hmm. it's just the classes like computer science. Like, I don't want to take that. Um, we're a liberal arts girl, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. It's just. I'm not trying to take some of the classes, but overall, I think this semester so far has been pretty good. Like, there's nothing too much to complain about. Okay, let's get into the fit check. So, I rated my friends, well, my roommate rated our friends with closet the other day, and we just stole a bunch of stuff. So, the shirt is hers, and then, you know, we got our rep to Spelman, um, Drake, whatever, the bookstore. We got these cargo pants, probably from Amazon, and then the Uggs, something slight. You wanna go? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you wanted you to want, go. I thought you wanted best for last. That's real. Because <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyway. No, no, no. no. <laughs> All right. Um, my rose. I think I've been feeling good this week. I think I've like found the things that make me feel good mentally. Um, I would say my bud. Like, bud's consistency. I sleep. I sleep. I sleep really well. Oh, I don't. I don't. Know. I don't um, stay up late like to do something. Like if I absolutely have to go, but really sleep is it. really important for me. Like I need to get like seven hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's when you go to bed. Um, I be falling asleep on people like Friday right? <laughs> before twelve. And what time do you wake up? Um, Habitually from last semester because I had 8 a.m. So I mm -hmm. like 7, 6 30, 7, mm -hmm. sometime earlier on. Actually. You had 8 a.m. last semester? Yeah, I, I mean, I choose those things. Um, like, I like to get everything done, done, done at the beginning. I'm the same way. So yeah. I don't like anything after 2 o'clock, like no yeah. class, nothing like same. that. Same. That's why I end on Mondays and uh, yeah. Tuesdays. I start at 1 and then yeah. 5 5 40, and I'm yeah. done with my life. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, tried, I tried to do that last semester. So. I don't think I have all my ducks in order. You know what I mean? I don't. I haven't been doing some of the things that are on my to-do list, like I said. So. Oh, but you still have time. It's the beginning of the semester. No, no, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. I think it's just. I sometimes I prioritize some things over other things. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so. Feel that. So. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so like, this jacket right here. <laughs> Exciting. It's from Martha's Vineyard. I don't know if y'all Oh, the inkwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Classy. Um, it's a little cargo pants. This is Jay's. Uh, it's a little confetti Jay's. Man, this is a watch. It's a black on watch brand. Or just a brand in general. I can do that. This is a, a bracelet my uncle gave me. Uh, I got a Harry Tunnel chain on. It's uh, black history, mom. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so here we are. Um, I don't know where she's from. I think she's from H and M. These jeans, I thrifted them. Well, period. My beaters. <laughs> I was just about to say. Are those your party horses? Yeah. And then beaters. I keep telling um, you. Yeah, that's me. Cool. I couldn't. I personally I know, can't not, do that. It's not always the best, like, 
the strategy. But yeah. especially for college though, I just felt like if I don't want to go anywhere else, I just put everything I can in my application and you know, trust myself. So your philosophy is pour everything into one specific project, so you're mm. doing really well in that as opposed to like um, kind of spreading it out and yeah. pouring into multiple things and focusing on different yeah, it's it's not always, it's not the most logical thing to do, but like I see where you're coming from. Sometimes, like when you feel drawn to something, you feel like it's for you, mm -hmm. and um, and you're for it, you mm -hmm. know. And but you know, I wouldn't say like if you if you if you're not 100 percent sure, obviously like you should find as many things as possible and then you can choose. But I know myself, and I know like I'm better at making decisions at the beginning than mm -hmm. I got a hundred things to choose from, and it's just it's too much. But I, I, I need to apply anymore because I haven't heard that yet. But I don't think anybody's heard that yet. I think they're kind of. Not yet. No, kind of, the um, only things that I can them. possibly hear back from is when I just sent the application in, and it's for spring and summer. Yeah. Oh, so, like, I'll, I'll find out that maybe. I sent them an email, I asked them about it, they didn't respond. So. Damn. That's the worst. Is there like a timeline on their website? Like. So, they, they had given us one at the informational back in November, and they were like, Oh, early 2024 is when you get the notification you got an interview or not. That's usually like February. Early February is when the decisions come out. Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm like, we are already in February and nobody's even heard a decline. Like, I haven't even heard a decline. Because on the application, it has like an accepted, declined, uh, awarded, and like in progress, right? Mm -hmm. So I haven't even declined. So I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I mean, it's still so early February, you know, yeah. for a few more days. So. Yeah. I feel like they need me in there. That's the other part. Like sometimes, like I think, like having the confidence in yourself mm -hmm. to understand that, like the place you're applying to needs you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like oh, even well. though you need it on your own, wow. you need the experience. Like what you can bring to that environment is valuable. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so like I know that if I went to that program and I was a member of that cohort, that I'd be able to improve the environment um, just because I need you know, mm -hmm. just the, just like when you guys go to where you're applying to. You know, that's how I, I try to do things. And I, I've honestly been down a lot, but I've had people that just encourage me to, you know, be, be confident and keep up the confidence that I have to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, keeping the energy consistent throughout the Yeah, I feel like getting when you get a lot of no's, it does dampen your confidence because it's like yeah. I know I'm great. Why aren't they saying that I'm great? Yeah, that, so yeah. it does suck. Um, I didn't learn that a lot at, during my sophomore year after. You seem very optimistic. Yeah, I think, you know, I just learned this in class. I have a class called Intro to Political Theory. Uh -huh. And we were talking about optimism, pessimism, and hopefulness. Optimism is actually kind of arrogant because you just think something's going to happen no matter what. It's just going to happen. And pessimism is kind of the opposite where you think everything's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that hopefulness is when you do everything in your power to try and, to try and succeed at something. And if it doesn't go your way, you don't let that discourage you. So I'm gonna try. I'm trying to switch over to hopefulness um, and not be as optimistic because I think optimism for me built up last year because everything I applied to I was getting into. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I had all the study abroad programs, like any program in school, whatever, 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 and it was like a lot of you know. I, I guess I was overconfident. And I was like, I'm thinking they need me, like you know. So coming into this year, I applied to something at the beginning of the year I didn't get in, um, and I was like, damn, like it really like brought me all the way down. So then it kind of reminded me to stay even here and um, not not get too high on my on my hopes. You know? I don't think I was overconfident in myself, but I did. I just assumed that everything would just work out. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So yeah, this semester um, that, that's honestly why I was hesitant to even apply to a bunch of them. Cause I'm like stuck in between. Like, dang, I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna understand what I'm trying to put down, you know, like in my application. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. I think with this one, uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm gonna try and find out. Like, like, yeah. Nah, but you exemplified a really good lesson. It's like I feel like at some in particularly, or like in a lot of competitive spaces, like people who are over ambitious, like you're supposed to need to buy a lot of stuff. Like, I feel like you just like I feel like sometimes I feel like something's gonna be for you. But like I think that sometimes the effects of like the quality of work you put into something. And, yeah. I don't know. That's just, I, I wouldn't tell anybody else, honestly, to like, only do one thing. Yeah. I, I honestly would. 
especially when it comes to something like an internship. Yeah. Um, because even outside of what happens in the resume, say you got all the internships you wanted during your four years, you go into your job, you go into grad school, if you didn't learn anything, uh, it's useless. Right. You won't look stupid, you won't be able to perform, and you won't you won't live up to your own expectations of yourself based on what you did in the past. So I think like having effective time in the summer is more important than having like a name on what you did in the summer. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So well, I think absolutely. I think definitely think you should exhaust all your resources. Want it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You should exhaust your resources in terms of like a variety of opportunities. Um, like like seeing what seeing what you can possibly do. Maybe it, once you get there, like the learning part and making sure that you're actually doing something, you know, like sometimes if you, if you get put in a big company, you kind of just become one of the interns, mm -hmm. just one of the people there doing the work. Um, and that's, that's where I missed up last semester. So I had an internship last semester um, with uh, Project Community Connections. Um, and they're a rapid housing organization, nonprofit, um, over here by like uh, RGSU. And, um, my job was not, there was no specific job, like, I mean, description of what I was supposed to do, because it's through a program like Morehouse. We were supposed to essentially design our own internship experience. And what I realized, I was trying to be over ambitious and create my own research project, because I was, I was, I really wanted to do research. You know, it's, it's a big part of getting, so I want to get my PhD, so it's a big part of applying to a doctoral program. Yeah, we be Dr. Yeah, not absolutely. So, so, like, I really wanted to do that. And um, when I got there, and they had these other tasks for me, um, like creating a, a bonus room for the um, for the employees, because they have high turnover in the homeless services industry, there's high turnover. Like client-facing employees, the people that deal with um, people that are experiencing homelessness, mm -hmm. that's a really tough job um, between like you know, unfair compensation, too much stress that it puts on you, et cetera, et cetera. So, what I wanted to do was create a project around like the future workforce of the homeless services industry because based on what I saw, people were leaving like after two weeks. Like or I think it was like when somebody gets hired, most of their employees will leave uh, after two years max they will leave. So it's like you don't even there's no consistent staff here, there's no consistent work culture. So even within the organization, like there is no there's no there's no connection between the people that are there. So what happens when you when you're trying to help somebody else? Like that's just like when you're not you're not well within yourself and you're trying to tell everybody else what to do with themselves. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's the same with the organizations. So anyways, where I messed up was trying to create my research project but not um, being a, not having the knowledge one, because I hadn't taken uh, the class that I would need um, to like actually know how to design that type of research study. Um, by myself, and then also like um, the other things that I had going on. So while I was there, I, I realized I was doing stuff like writing articles, like for school or doing homework, like at the internship. And then when I would leave, I wouldn't have anything to show for it. So the director, like of the program that I'm in, that I'm in is called the Social Justice Fellow, Dr. Young. She called me one day. She was like, "Oh, Evan, how's the internship going?" I was like, "Oh, it's going good." You know, she was like, "It's not going good." And I was like. It's okay. She's like, it's not, it's not going to <laughs> You're not okay. Because she knows the, the, the co-CEOs of the company, uh, Margaret and Jimmy. She was like, Margaret and Jimmy have been telling me uh, that they haven't checked in with you in a while. They don't really know what's going on, like what you've accomplished, blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, like, oh, shit. Like, it's, like, it's like when you put your head down and you look up and you see where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, I'm so busy, but I'm not being productive. Yeah. So I was, I was ridiculously busy last semester. But at the end, when I looked up and I saw like what I actually accomplished for myself, or if I honored the commitments that I made, I didn't do that, you know. So um, at that point, it's about accountability and, and making sure you can do your best, um, you know, put your best foot forward after that moment. So I told her I was like, man, like, you know, I really agree. I think I was being over ambitious in what I wanted to accomplish here, um, you know, by myself because I just didn't have, I just didn't have the resources, you know, and I didn't reach out and ask for help. Because I was worried about them not thinking that I knew how to do what I needed to do, um, you know. And you know, at the end of the day, they're there to support you. So you're supposed to lean on them. They're supposed to tell me what you need. And I just didn't do that. I just, I just thought I was supposed to do it by myself, um, you know, and perform and represent one house for them. And 
myself, really myself. Man. So that ended, right? Um, you know, so that that's just like an example of an experience that I had last semester, where like I had to I had to take accountability and I like failed, you know. But coming in this new year, I had to send an email like basically, you know, I think I want to make a different decision in terms of where I work for this semester. Because the other thing I realized was what I'm doing there is not really gonna lend itself towards like what I want to do. Yeah. It would just it might be helping them in some type of way. But even then, they told me like, oh, we don't know if we're gonna have exactly what you want to do here for next semester. So I found out like, you know, mutually just wasn't a good fit. So then you have to <coughs> sit there and explain that, you know, instead of just like, cause I could have just like kept moving the semester, not said anything, not checked in, just like, you know, so, um, so you know, things like that, moments like that where you're not, you're not doing well, like you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and you have all these commitments that you're not really honoring. That's the stuff that kind of helped me come into this semester um, with like a new outlook on terms of like how I want to approach things and the precedent that I want to set before I make a commitment. So that's why like I was I'm, I was honestly embarrassed like being so late for you guys. And I'm like damn like you know I told I asked you if I could move it back to three because I thought like I could make it. Um, but you know obviously I was late so. You know, and that's why I told you, like, I, I, like I'll, I'll get on the podcast because I had some apprehension, you know, trepidation about yeah. being on camera and talking. I'm a private person, mm -hmm. you know, like, I have a lot of energy for people individually, you know, but when it comes to showing it to everybody, that's not my thing, you know, I kind of mm -hmm. stay out of it, yeah. Right. So it's more of like the people that know, you know, type of thing. Um, so, you know, I appreciate you, like, keeping, keeping with me and being like, not like me to come on here. Because I think it's just like a moment of work. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You dropped a lot of gems in there. You know, like everything. I think you're a philosopher. Undercover. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I, try to, I try to really learn from things. That's, That's the only way to learn. I make a yeah. lot of mistakes. I like how you reflected on the internship. And like, okay, this is like what I've learned about myself. This yeah. is what. Even though it's great, I need to modify it yeah. so I can still make my deadlines and still honor what I say. I'm gonna do for me. And accountability is definitely key. And for you, well, I feel like it takes a lot to be able to accept that mm -hmm. that you're not taking yeah. account or that you weren't taking accountability, yeah. especially yeah. in the internship space. Yeah, you're, like, you're trying to do good. Like, yeah. And the other thing about that is. Uh, but we like need to remember is when we go into an organization that's not immediately connected with like our school, we're representing our school. So mm -hmm. if we go in there and we do if we don't do well, they're not they don't want anybody else from the that's same place you mean. came from because they will be just like you, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's when my professor suggested that I added an email, you know, I hope this does not, you know, I hope my departure doesn't affect anybody else's opportunity coming behind me that may want to work with project and with connections yeah. in the future. And I added in that, you know, I want to make sure that we can keep an open line of communication because it's no hard feelings. It's more of a thing where it's like... You know what you want to do. Yeah, like I know what I want to do and they 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 know that they don't have what I what I want, what I need there. And, you know, if it's not something that I want to do, it's probably not going to be 100% effort into helping. Even though I'm still passionate about, like, housing and homeless, you know, just like helping uh, that population. Mm -hmm. um, that just comes from like what my dad used to do. It's like my dad um, ran like affordable housing authority mm -hmm. in Maryland, so I kind of saw him um, be able to like help people in that way. So I thought it would be such a cool opportunity for me to do that, but I wasn't ready. You know, I wasn't ready. Not like I wasn't adequate enough. I'm not good enough. But in terms of like, that's not where you are in your journey. No, nah, but also just like time wise, I had I had someone. I'm leaving. I'm going back and going to school. I go there, I'm hard, I'm tired, like, you know what I mean? It, it just wasn't, it wasn't the right moment for that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, the accountability portion, that's something that, like, I, that I just really was So that's something that I had to. Uh, it's already been instilled. Yeah, that's, that's automatic. So I wouldn't even say that's something that's, like, difficult. That's kind of something that has to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And any, that means when you do well and when you don't do well. Yeah. You know, just, just being honest about it. And taking ownership of your action is the only way you can grow. Yeah, absolutely. So, I appreciate you guys. Thank you.
appreciate that experience. That's not on my resume. Sure. So the last question I posed, was what are we letting go of because of the season that we're going to be in right now? Oh, yeah. I said procrastination. Yes. OK, yeah, yeah. Continue. <laughs> procrastination. I am a horrible procrastinator, especially when it's something I don't like and I feel like I'm being forced to do. That's like my downfall because what is school? Yeah. It's not school, it's certain subjects in school. <laughs> so like, I love all my major classes, but unfortunately there's some classes in the general eds that I don't like or I happen to not click and work with the professor. So it's like an extra push and I don't have that push in me or I choose not to execute that push. So I'm forcing myself to execute that push, especially when I know I'm not good in that. Like math isn't like my strongest area. No, I'm procrastinating. I'm putting stuff in the calendar. Using all my little time management tools. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm letting go, or I want to let go of like. Okay, so I take things really personal. Mm -hmm. So like I think like whenever I get told no, right? Not just like. No, like we're talking to you say no, but I'm saying like from applying to different internships or if the outcome isn't what I expected or what I wanted, then I can take that very personally and it's hard to come back sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have to learn to kind of pivot. Just like rejection. Yeah, I don't take re I don't always take rejection, you know. So I'm trying to fix that mm -hmm. going forward for sure. I need to let go of uh, like not having a routine. Like I would like to be on my phone. Even though I had things at certain times, I feel like I didn't assign myself a certain time to actually do it at that time. Because what that does is like when you, when you have the time that's supposed to be your free time or the time to relax, you can't anymore because you didn't reach your time. So I need to work on that. So I'm going to stick to the schedule. Said. And actually, like, do the things that I tell myself. Um, like, I, don't know. I, I talk to myself a lot in my head. So, mm -hmm. like, my self talk is really important to me. So, I think last semester, there was a time where I didn't have any self talk. Like, I didn't have that voice in my head. I wasn't really like, you know, yeah. I was just kind of like doing and then getting upset at this. And so I realized it was getting replaced by just like negative situations. You know? So, like, I wasn't. In my own voice, I was like talking to myself. I feel like, I think towards Anna's point, when you get a lot of no's, you just hear nothing but that negative no. Even like you might not know the person behind it, you know, saying no. You create, you person, I create this voice and like this idea of I'm not good enough. Like that no is like so big in my mind you know, that like anything positive I tell myself is overshadowed by that. So I def I talk to myself a lot too. Like I told Blue, like talk like I find places like in my own space where I can just sit and like, okay Taylor, what do I need to do? What am I trying to accomplish? So I think self self talk is also important. Everyone should at least do it once. That's really like try it. Yeah. 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 Ye
Well, I do wish you, I do get what you mean. I feel like God put us all here for different reasons, and we all have different assignments. And that is something that I have to learn. Mm -hmm. We're not all doing the same thing mm -hmm. by any means, as similar as it may seem. But, yeah, that's that's a good question. What do you think you're doing? Um, I think, like, overall, just to provide some type of support to people, like, I don't know, I think, I feel, like, I think what people need to pay attention to is, like, the thing that you, that you do without having to tell yourself to do. Like, the thing you can't help but yeah. do. So the thing I can't help but do is, like, pose questions like that to people to make sure, like, you have, like, vision for us you know what I mean, like that, like, I can't help but trying to support somebody that's like in my life and, um, and have like a reciprocal relationship with those people. Like, I can't help but um, think about like how um, my parents and what they're trying to do for me and my sister and like how I need to take those things and also the extent, like extended family and just like other people um, that like, I grew up with and like try to like Spread that, you know what I mean? So, whatever you can't help but do, you know? Like, the reason that I write that I wanted to do, even though it was assigned to me, the reason why I like, wanted to stay with it is because I think, like, highlighting people is, like, something that I want to do and making sure that people, like, see themselves, you know what I mean? And that other people see them. So, you know, something that I would do when, I was, when I'm down, something that I still do when I'm down, is I like, try to give people their flowers and like, stuff just keeps you and like you know, like, you know, like, you know, like all these things. But it's not really what it's about. It's really just like when you when you um, and it goes back to the responsibility you just had to other people it's like human. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like the human responsibility. If you see something with somebody, like why not try to help bring it out Because like we're all trying to do it ourselves, but imagine when people like help each other. Yeah. And like actually did, like actively that, and that was like your mission. Like I need to do this for people, because that helps yourself. Like when you when you help bring something out of somebody, and you see them like blossom, and you're like, dang, like that's something that like, I see them you know, happy. I can like explore in this area. So that's why I like art. Because imagine having having a piece of history. That's what art is about. Like, a piece of history about yourself that you can just have. You know, in this moment in time, this is where I'm doing. You know, this is what other people said about me. This is how I was thinking at that time. Like, that's why I think future is important. So, yeah. yeah. Good talk, guys. That's all. Well, I mean, I guess I was I feel like a lot of why I do what I do and why I feel like I'm on set is a lot connected to like, you. I feel like I'm pretty introspective, pretty. I guess this could be a good thing and a bad thing, but I'm putting it in my head too. Yeah. Um, and so that in turn affects the relationships I have with other people and like me talking and people be asking me questions. Like, I just get very curious about people and I think that reflects in journalism too. That's why I like journalism because that's all you do with people. You, you're you being there for them. Like, you talk like, I remember talking to one girl, my family friend. She was like, yeah, I could do journalism because I was in, like, I, like, I just couldn't be as like a resources I wish I could be like, you know, you have to go through two people like in the dot like good times and bad times. Like saying you're doing art on a fire, like you talk to people about a fire, like on your house or whatever, whatever. So I mean like, yeah, that's why I feel like I'm here. Just to listen, just to hear, tell people stories. Um, not just yeah. what to. But yeah. yeah, but I had thought that like you put into like when you were going to house like you know, I thought like energy you really put in that, you know what I mean? For the amount of time that we slept with it. Yeah. We started that back in like was it early October when the first, first project? Yeah, first like the first week in October. Yeah, we did that like three months. Mm -hmm. Like so, you know what I mean? Shit like that. Like, um with that, there's one thing the what I wanna go this season, and this kind of thing, like this kind of feels like I don't know. It's control. I think that, you know, as you know, humans like you always wanna be able to I think what God's pushing me to do this is in my life is just trusting Him. Faith has been the thing. So that's my thing. Control. Just have to say I'm not going to be the best foot forward, but I already I just know that everyone will be good regardless. 
drives back. Exactly. Amen. Amen. So, with that, just to finish this out, so this week in my marketing class, Kim was there. I participated. Um, but I think there's nothing class that's filming, um, like a digital marketing or whatever. Whatever it is. It's not a marketing class, it's like a journalist class. It's a journalism class, but it's also a marketing class. And one thing, which I thought was kind of interesting when I first looked at the syllabus, my teacher made us do was these remarkable statements. So I just want us to do that with each other today. Why are we close to that? Why are we remarkable? Or why? Like, let's just go to online. I'm going to go down online. All right? Um, oh, wait. I got a follow up question. Because, um, so in one of my newest playlists that I made for my, my, my uh, car rides, I added Mary J. Rogers just fine. And that's like. <laughs> Oh, okay. But like I've been feeling, <laughs> yeah. I've been feeling like that song has really been like empowering me and pushing me to go forward. So like it's kind of been my little anthem for the semester. So what's one song that you would say is your anthem for the that will come oh, that's a good way to close up too. for the semester? Yeah, I gotta look real quick. Mine is just behind. Um, it, I don't know if it's me and my car when it's on because I will turn my light all the way up. Yeah, it, it's too good, and I, I really feel it in my soul, like, yeah, in the, it's and the deep hits. Like, if you really, really look and listen at those lyrics, she was really spitting. She was spitting. Oh, wait, I do have, I do have one, you know? Yeah. My all-time favorite, Jersey. <laughs> Hello? The, okay, and this so, is why she's my spell baby. Hello? This is an oldie but goodie, <laughs> but every time I'm in the gym, I have to listen to the motto. I have to listen to the motto at least once a day because I feel like that song really keeps me going. And every time I listen to Aubrey, I'm just thinking like, this means a genius. That's Aubrey. So, yeah, I would say that's my, that's my go-to anthem song. Mm -hmm. What about you, Are you still in the Okay. Uh, I, be, I be listening to music in like different languages. I don't know if you understand. Like, oh, oh, oh. like I love everything. No. <laughs> you can listen to a lot of music. Every time I get an Amazon card, I'll be like, I'm here. Yeah. Anyway. But there's a song, it's a rapper, his name is Mary Jane. There's a song called What Are My Friends. Mm -hmm. okay. Ooh. I like it based off the title. Just the title, it gave me. Yeah. 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 Um, what are my friends? I, Go to my like on repeat on Spotify. If you're on Apple Music, I don't know what you're doing. Spotify. Living our best life. Hello. I love Apple Music. Mm. Love mine. Mm. I love this Music. Do you I have a student discount? Spotify is like my slave. Like literally. Like, oh. <laughs> whoa. 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 Uh, uh, Black History Month. I'm so sorry. But actually, no. That's reclaiming my time. Don't be into my ancestors. Back. Anyway, yeah, no, no, no. Spotify <laughs> is like Spotify. It will generate what you need. For, like it will give you what you need. Anyway, so I had to go through my honor repeat on Spotify, and it's definitely no weapon by Franklin. No weapon. Mm -hmm. yeah, no weapon. Wait, the song. Oh wait, the song is like no weapon. Oh, okay. 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 No, she was singing some of my music in the car. I was like, okay, Bubba, I didn't want to say nothing. She could sing because I didn't want you to stop. Yeah, yeah. I so I went out on a fast earlier this uh, month in January. And I had like I stopped listening. To, like I don't know. I just it was, I was called but, like not listening to secular music, so I did secular music. Um, and yeah, but like that's all. But honestly, like and then and now I've gotten back to listening to like home music, and I'm just like I don't know. Like, my my algorithms are all Jesus music. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Jesus wait, music. Wait, wait, how is that song? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wow. Love to See, I knew she was good. Um, but yeah, no one did this song. Mine is a good follow up to that. Mm -hmm. Mine is From Foundation by Maverick City Music. I'm yeah. such a Maverick City Music fan. Yeah, I haven't got into them yet. Yeah. I should. Yeah, yeah, because you know, are you putting this on right now? Yes. Okay. I'll be screaming it. Because, like, you won't fail. Yeah, yes, he won't. It's too good. It's too good. Okay. Well, I don't know what I'm to do. I ain't been to come for a question. No, no, I'm you're sorry. Good. Do you have any questions? Uh, I already said the motto. Oh, yeah, the motto. The motto. So I just got off. You know, she got a personal relationship. I said, yeah, we got a first date basis. Aubrey knows who Aaron Garner is. He do. Aaron Garner. 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 Aaron Garner.
say that. Yeah, me and him. See, I'm I'm like his his like third wife or something, but he don't even. Okay. How do we get that third? Cause I just think about him and like Nikki and. Uh, no. With Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah, like. Rihanna's you know? happily married and has two kids. Okay, Leave but we we still can't kid. forget history. Just saying. You can. You can't talk about the present. You know. Hello. Hello. What are we just talking about? Like? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do our unblockable statements. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go over there. Uh, I, I got. I'll start with me. Why are you remarkable? Yeah, you did Why? this. Okay. Okay. What you got from? Well, what I got from the survey, and I kind of agree with my survey because my friends don't be cool too well. Um, I'm very willful, and so when I say that, I mean I will do a what I want by any any means possible. Like I'm going to make it happen. If I say so, that's why when I, someone makes a commitment to me, I take it very seriously. So like you were talking about, oh, we go to dinner, whatever, whatever, on Friday. You want to come with us? Yes. All right. I said that. So I better see it to fruition. I do well. Anyway, continue. So yeah, I'm very willful, and I hold a lot of my promises to myself. I hold them and I fulfill them. So. Vice versa, I do see. Um, yeah, I'm very vocal, very passionate about what I want to do, and so that's why I'm more uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I'll think about that again, but that's what I have right now. Evan, actually, we'll go this way. Ryan, you're uncomfortable because of. How are you uncomfortable? You're uncomfortable because of your spirit. I feel like you're just so welcoming. So, like, I feel like I've known you, like, even though, like, we're not the closest, I feel like I'm always. I'm not scared to like come to you. Yeah. That is and, such a big compliment. Yeah. And she has a really nice place, y'all. I got my head up there. I was a little comfy. I was like, yeah, girl, go ahead. Yeah, this is so. Oh, crazy. no. My uh, dance sister, Tati. She did my braid, child. We made a bunch Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she just has a deal coming up. That's why I was doing it. Crap picture. That's why I was doing it. That's why I was doing it. I put my friends on all the time. Okay. Be made up by Tati. Be <laughs> made up by Tati. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's why I was late to that one episode. We played it. Anyway, you're done. <laughs> Um, this may sound crazy, but you definitely give ultimate like mom vibes. Yes. Mom? No, yeah. like that can. No, like Karen. Okay, yes. Karen. 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 I can do Karen. Are you the mom friend or no? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm the youngest. I'm like 20 years the old. The baby? Oh. You're I want to be the youngest and still be the mom friend, though. Yeah. But I'm not. Okay. Okay. Like, I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. That's just not my vibe. But who is the mom friend? Well, I always have surrounded myself with older friends because I was always young. Yeah, because you were, I see you be with, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kayla, you are cool because you're just so cool. Oh, yeah, you're just very cool. Yeah, you're just very cool. Yeah, you're just very cool. Thank so you. Cool. And I think that, you know, I'm not scared to, like, be real with my you. Like, I'm like, you know what, I think it's okay or whatever. And she's just going to be like, okay, so what are you going to do with that? I am so straightforward. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. we got this. What yeah. we doing? Exactly. Eric, you're remarkable because you're so sweet. Oh, yeah. You're like one of the sweetest I'm people. I'm very excited to see where our relationship goes. Yeah. Um, yes. Evan! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, you know what? I, I love Evan. I love you, Evan. I really do. You're so because, good. like, I, y'all, mm -hmm. I met this this man when I meet you in September. Yeah, that's yeah, and like, I don't know, you just proved yourself to be such a good person, and like, like, I don't know, you're just a, yeah, like, I don't know, what's understood does not make sense, so I don't know, I'm sure, yeah, 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 okay, who, who's going? As I went down the line. <laughs> what's well, like that? I just am, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're am I like going down the same line? Okay. Start yourself. I'm talking about myself. Okay, I would say that I am remarkable because I feel like I'm genuine. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays it's really hard to find genuine people or people that are looking out for your best interests, and I think that's really important. So I feel like I classify as a genuine person. If we're going down the line, Brian, I already said like you're remarkable because you just give ultimate like. Welcoming, caring, like, you know, I'll go to work for you type vibe. That's what it's getting. That's so real, because all my friends say that. That's yeah. So yeah. Go team go. <laughs> go team go. Now I think 
of Teen Titans. <laughs> Kayla, you're remarkable because I already know you don't play about people that you love in your I life. I don't. I don't. I feel like I you, would, you would go to war, actually. So. I will fight. <laughs> I don't fight, but I will. <laughs> you would. That'll be my first fight. Well, yeah. And a lot of people wouldn't do that for the people that they love, so love that for you. Mira, I love you because I don't know. This is repetitive, but she's ready. She's she's so ready. But I just love how you're so intentional with everything that you do. You'll put so much thought into literally everything, whether it be like plans that you're making with someone or you've spent so much time working on this podcast. So I just feel like you're just, everything yeah. that you do is for a reason. And that's like a power move. It'll help you so much throughout life. So I 